My boyfriend plays basketball on Tuesday nights and um, really, this is the only time this can happen. Hi, hello, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Cheers, baby. The cap on that. That's embarrassing. Today we're doing a chaotic video. A graphic has emerged on the internet that is, I think, called the Sally Rooney Extended Universe. It was invented by Read by Bren. I'm gonna break it down today. I will link her account in the description below because this is her making. So don't blame me for the chaos that's about to ensue. There are a plethora of connections between Sally Rooney, Taylor Swift, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and Phoebe Bridgers. We're gonna break them down. I don't even think I have enough room on this wall, but I refuse to do it outside of my room because we have a mouse in our house and I'm terrified of it. So now it's just a roommate. So that's what's going on here. So we're doing it on this wall. If my landlord is watching this, no, no, you're not. When I went to go buy washi tape to complete this, I saw this little pig pen and I thought, pig pen, where pigs live and also this pen. This is gonna be my pointer. So how this is gonna work. We're just gonna connect all of the different things in the Sally Rooney universe. Y you'll get it as it goes along. Purple is gonna be for, there's a creative connection, whether it be, you know, they directed something the other person is in, they acted in, they wrote, things of that nature. Pink is a romantic connection or a personal connection. You know, they're friends, they're partners, they're ex-partners. Sally Rooney wrote these two novels. People in conversations with friends. This is written in a different language. I didn't notice until I printed it. I had to get this printed at a print shop because why would I own a printer? I would sooner kill myself than own a printer. Both of these books, oh, runaway successes, icons, legends, the Bible, really. And they both spurned two television adaptions, conversations with friends and normal people. Just a side note, if this is the legitimate cover for normal people, nothing has given me more of an ick. The moments before people kiss to me, actually trauma. But I have not watched the normal people or conversations with friends show. I'm, t I'm literally terrified to because the books mean too much to me. I actually think if I didn't like the show, it would ruin my life. Starring in the normal people show, Paul Mescal. When I was looking at pictures, I knew immediately I was gonna use this one because he's holding a bunch of stuff in his hands. And to me, that's the female gaze. Daisy Edgar Jones as Marianne and Connell. I should literally be, be in prison for the amount of times I look up Daisy Edgar Jones suit. Daisy Edgar Jones suit in the Google bar? Constantly. Constantly. Sexy man, Paul Mescal, sexy woman, love of my life, Phoebe Bridgers, are dating. So we gotta connect them. Here's how I know my brand is good. When they first became official, I wanna say I received 20,000 DMs from close friends, family, from people who watch me here saying, oh, did you see the news? Like to them, this was a thing that I was on a need to know basis. They're, they're dating, okay? When they started dating and now they're allegedly engaged, people blew up my phone to the extent where I thought a family member had died. I thought a traumatic worldwide event had happened. Um, And no, it's just these two dated. And I will say, Paul Pascal, dating Phoebe Bridgers, has made him, this has made him a 10 out of 10. That's because of a theory I have called the girlfriend theory. I've talked about this with my partner all the time. Any cis straight man who has a girlfriend that is bisexual is hot. It gets hotter. The onslaught of their relationship makes them glow up because you're like, well, obviously he's cool. And that is my theory. Let's break this down even further. Who is starring in the Conversations with Friends show? Joe Alwyn. Who is Joe Alwyn dating? Miss Taylor Swift. The plot thickens, the plot thickens. So some of the stuff I'm going to be outlining in this documentary of sorts, this high concept documentary journalistic piece of work is going to be already complete on the Sally Rooney Cinematic Universe on Read by Bren's Instagram. But I'm also adding my own. I have discovered through personally, just kind of a lot of inward thinking, meditation, some connections of my own. And it's worth saying that I studied journalism for two years, okay, in university, then I, Dropped out of that program, hated it. But I learned a thing or two. It's, this is high brow researched. Beautiful woman, Daisy Edgar Jones. She's starring in two things coming out. Where the Crawdads Sing, which is a movie based off of that book that a bunch of people have read. It's about somebody who lives in a lagoon. I'm assuming from this picture. I haven't read the book, I won't read the book. I am a snob, unfortunately, not in all regards. I've never claimed to have good taste. So she's in this, haven't read it, 
It's about a, presumably a woman living in a swamp. She's also starring in Under the Banner of Heaven, which is a true crime detective show about Mormons. I'm really excited to wa watch this. I'm gonna watch this. And I was like, oh my God, I can't wait for this to come out. When I printed this off, it's fully out. It's fully out. So there's that. Who is also starring in Under the Banner of Heaven? Why, it's so funny you would ask that. It's Andrew Garfield. Look at him. Look at that. So yeah, Andrew Garfield. He's in the Sally Rooney Cinematic Universe, okay? Don't talk to him. Don't ever talk to him. Where the Crawdads Sing? Swamp movie? Swamp woman movie? Guess who wrote a song for it? I'll give you a guess. Three, two, one. It's Miss Taylor Swift, okay? No thoughts, head empty. Wrote the original song, Carolina, for Swamp Movie, Where the Crawdads Sing. We're gonna talk first about two of the songs Phoebe Bridgers has released that, that are, they are pertinent to the Sally Rooney Cinematic Universe. They are pertinent to my multiverse of madness. I don't care about Marvel, guys. I'm so sorry, I really don't. I've only seen, I've seen the Spider-Man movie, the Spider-Man movies but I don't know what the fuck the multiverse of madness is. It's an objectively funny title, and who am I if not using pop culture references to garner views? You stay. So she has written Sidelines, the Taylor Swift song, Nothing You Featuring, Phoebe Bridgers. Side note, whenever I read Paul Mescal's name, my, my brain goes Paul Mescaline, the psychedelic. She obviously sang this song with Taylor Swift on Red Taylor's version. That's pretty simple. Sidelines was written for the Conversations with Friends show. It's such a good song. I'm actually seeing Phoebe Bridgers in concert in Toronto alone, partially because I could only get one ticket. It was a literal bloodbath. It was sad girl on sad girl crime, but also because I'm not really in the headspace. I'm not really in the headspace to be around people. I'm going to scream my ass off. Now another Phoebe Bridgers pro- <laughs> So another Phoebe Bridgers project. Save Your Complex music video. Save Your Complex music video, okay? So it's for a song, Miss Phoebe, you're sick, has wrote. We see that, we love it. Well, guess who also stars in it? Her boyfriend slash fiance, possibly, question mark, Paul Mescaline. So he's in that too. Oh, and I bet you thought it was over. You know who directed it? Do you know who directed it? Phoebe Waller-Bridge. There is some kind of comedy short, like a crossover short between Fleabag and normal people. I'm not British. I've never claimed to be British, okay? But it's a Fleabag, normal people crossover. Also, I just like to have a picture of Andrew Scott on this board. Hot priest, he could hit me with a car. He could, like I would let him. We'll also put Fleabag, which is a comedy show that Phoebe Waller-Bridge wrote. Fleabag is one of the best comedy shows, I would argue, of all time. It's based on a one woman show and it's about grief and neuroses and basically this woman, Fleabag's experience, kind of feeling like an outsider in life and she like looks at the camera a lot, okay? You're caught up. I feel like I'm literally the physical embodiment of that Parks and Recreation scene where I'm like, could a mentally ill person do this? The answer is yes. There are a couple connections between icon, legend, never been done before, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and Miss Taylor Swift. The first one is the October 5th, 2019 episode of Saturday Night Live, hosted by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, musical guest, Miss Taylor Swift. Where else do we know Miss Phoebe Waller-Bridge from? Harry Styles' Treat People With Kindness music video. They wear little sparkly suits and they dance and we all eat it up. We absolutely slop that shit down our gullets like we are pigs eating from a trough. So that then introduces, of course, Mr. Harry Styles into the Sally Rooney cinematic universe. You know, it's about time. It really is. Are, is anyone surprised? Not me. It is shocking that he is in the Sally Rooney Cinematic Universe considering the fact that I feel like I'd have to put a gun to his head to get him to read a book written by a woman. But you know, considering the fact that every other man in showbiz seems to be actually evil and the bar is on the floor, we will let that slide. I bet I know what you're thinking. Oh, I bet I do. And that is that Harry Styles and Miss Taylor Swift. They dated. They dated right before Taylor wrote 1989 because she wrote Style and Out of the Woods about Harry. Style is about them hooking up in private, these two. Literally would pay millions of dollars to be a fly on that wall. And Out of the Woods is about how Harry hit someone with his car and killed them on a date. They were on a date together and he said, let me drive. And then he 
is a shitty driver. There's like nine Taylor Swift lyrics about how shitty Harry Styles is as a driver, which same. And they're at the hospital because he allegedly hit someone. With his car, you do love to see it. This makes it look like I had a daughter who was killed. Let's bring a couple things into the fold, okay? She of course dated Jake Gyllenhaal. Trigger warning Jake Gyllenhaal, first of all. Jake, if you're mad about your photo, be a better person. He dated her when he was 30 something and she was but 19, I believe. Oh no, 20. He didn't show up to her 21st birthday. He made her feel like shit, but she wrote all too well. So although we're going boo, flop, murder, murder, electric chair, electric chair, he did inspire all too well. The all too well short film, banger, banger which Taylor Swift wrote the song for and directed. We have to unfortunately bring into the fray Maggie Gyllenhaal, who is Jake Gyllenhaal's sister. They are outnumbering me now, okay? What did Maggie do, you may ask? That's a good question. Maggie Gyllenhaal is from a series of, there's like a generation of actors who I was too young to watch their movies, but they're not old enough for their movies to be seen as classics. So if you put a gun to my head and said, name a movie Maggie Gyllenhaal's been in, couldn't tell you, don't give a shit. She directed The Lost Daughter. But who is starring in The Lost Daughter, you may ask? It's Queen Olivia Coleman, the only Queen of England I will accept. Also, have you guys seen those rumors that the Queen of England is like just dead and they're not really telling anyone? Love it. Another film that Olivia Coleman was in, The Favorite. This movie was nominated for Oscars. I feel like she might've won her Oscar for this. I couldn't tell you. The amount I care about movies is so small. You have to put some serious effort into getting me to watch a movie, okay? I will sooner watch nine hours of television straight before I watch a film. But she starred in The Favorite. You know who also starred in The Favorite? Joe Alwyn. What else has Olivia Coleman starred in, you might ask? Fleabag, that's right. So give me a second to do this. Now we only have three more characters in my multiverse of madness. Has this been chaotic enough for you? It is easy to say, oh, I love Fearless. I love Speak Now because you can claim nostalgia. You can claim that it mattered to you as a teenager. It is easy to say, I love Folklore. I love Evermore. They're great albums, but also they're back in the era when Taylor Swift was popular. You know what the real ones like? You know the real one Taylor Swift albums? Reputation, Lover. I was in the trend with Taylor Swift while well, you were off saying that she seems fake or she seems like a bitch or whatever. You, were on, you took Kanye's side, okay? Stinky, stinky choice of you. Look what you made me do. For this last act, we're also gonna talk about Killing Eve, which was, stay still, another one of Phoebe Waller-Bridge's shows starring Canadian icon, legend, Sandra Oh. And the final piece to this puzzle that brings a connection between the Phoebes, a tale of two Phoebes, is cinematographer Rena Yang. Now let's connect the dots here. Rena Yang is a cinematographer. She's worked on Euphoria. She's worked on a lot of projects. She's worked on a lot of music videos as well. And she did the cinematography for Save Your Complex music video and the All Too Well short film. Look What You Made Me Do is in Killing Eve, that song, okay? I think that's everything. Welcome to my multiverse of mother fucking madness. The Sally Rooney extended universe. It's simple stuff, everyone. Ah, I hope this video was good, chaotic, entertaining enough. Thank you so much for watching. Again, credit for this idea and a lot of the through lines in this absolutely unhinged connectivity board to read by Bren. I'm linking their account down below, follow. All of my stuff is in the description below, my Instagram, all that fun stuff, follow me there if you wanna, I don't know, contact me. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourself. Bye.